following program is sponsored by Mission America and may contain views and opinions that do not reflect the views of the advertisers, staff, and owners of this station. Some material may not be suitable for children. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah, I used to be a liberal, too. Reproductive health includes contraception and family planning and access to legal, safe abortion. For me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. Yeah, I used to be a liberal, too. This is Mission America with Linda Harvey. Because with God, all things, all things, all things are still still possible. Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to Mission America Radio. I am Linda Harvey, and I'm so very glad you've joined us this afternoon. Please visit our website at missionamerica.com. That's missionamerica.com for lots more information about our organization and to read news, articles, and Christian commentary on the culture. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Harvey Linda and read my articles on WND.com, AmericanThinker.com, and BarbWire.com and the Ohio Conservative Review. And please be sure to check out my book, Maybe He's Not Gay, Another View on Homosexuality. And you can learn more about it right on the homepage at our website at missionamerica.com. Well, today I welcome to the program a guest who may be familiar to a lot of you if you're reading the latest articles out on conservative websites. Gina Miller is a columnist and a TV and radio personality as well, and one of the editors, uh, or a heavy contributing writer, I should say, to the new conservative website that I also write to uh, for occasionally, barbwire.com. So thank you so much for joining us here today on Mission America Radio, Gina. Linda, thanks for having me. I'm real glad to be on with you. Well, it's great to have you on. You and I have talked on email and uh, many, many uh, other ways over the years on Facebook, and uh, you were kind enough to promote my book and give me a great review, which... um, really helped a lot uh, at the time it, it came out last January when all the uh, our ideological opponents, should I say, uh, were all over it, and you were nice enough to give me a nice review. So uh, I've been following your work for a while, and you're one of those people that is just a, you're a fabulous writer. You tell it like it is. Um, I just feel like uh, there's you're probably getting a real good following from this. So t- uh, tell me a little bit about, about your background. Tell our, our listeners what what brought you into these conservative issues, and have you been a conservative for all of your adult life, and those kinds of things? Yes, Linda, I have. I've always been a conservative, um, but like a lot of people, I wasn't politically active when I was younger. You just don't pay attention. You take the the freedoms of America for granted, and as I got older, I started looking around and, you know, being bothered by what I was seeing, the the, the decay in the culture. And early along, well, in college, I, I took a lot of writing classes, and I've always been kind of a writer. And um, I started writing, blogging on World Net Daily used to have a little forum where you could write, and I would write little mini blogs. And it progressed from there to uh, actually being a columnist on uh, websites, and now there's several sites that carry my column including Barb Wire, and in the meantime, I was also, I also got into radio about 20 years ago, and uh, I was a disc jockey for many years. Now I, now I just do radio, commercial radio production, and um, I do my columns every week, I do one, two or so a week, and speak out. I, I just felt compelled to speak out on the, the culture and the issues. I'm not an expert on anything except my opinions, and, <laughs> but that's, that's what we do. We're just speaking out. We're speaking against the, the moral decay we see across the board in our in our land. Absolutely. And you're down in Mississippi, right? Yes, I'm on the Mississippi Gulf Coast here. Mm, wow. Wonderful place to be when you're sitting up here in Ohio. Now, it's pretty nice up here in Ohio now, but in the wintertime, I'd love to be where you are. <laughs> <laughs> it gets a little cool down here, believe it or not, oh. but we don't see much snow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know... Um, I have been just sort of vaguely following, so I'm going to ask you to fill us in on this, but it has implications for the whole country. 
what's been going on, and you've written about this in uh, at least one recent column that I've uh, read on Barbed Wire, about this new campaign in the southern states by Human Rights Campaign, which is the major homosexual group in Washington um, and others, um, to uh, basically it's an attack on religious freedom. They're trying to equate, again, homosexual rights and transgender rights with uh, uh, and the, the um, r- uh, that religious freedom rights takes away from uh, rights, quote unquote, that homosexuals and transgenders ought to have. And they're they're concentrating this in a campaign in the South. Tell us about what's happened in Miss- Mississippi on that line, because I I think that it's um, a very key. I think they focused in on, well, like a laser on your state. Yes, they are. The the campaign. It's an eight and a half million dollar campaign from the human rights. Uh, campaign, a a permanent effort is what they're calling it. They're targeting three southern states, Mississippi, Alabama, and Arkansas. And what is interesting about that is that these are traditionally strong, strong conservative states, a lot of uh, Christian population here. This is a testament to how brazen they have become in this movement, especially since the uh, installation of Barack Obama in the presidency. And he's He's a huge supporter of the militant homosexual movement, as we know. And since he's been in office, they have their their success has exploded across America. So now they are they are brave enough to target these southern states, and their effort here is geared toward getting employment non discrimination laws passed. And as you know, th- this is a very very evil, insidious thing because. A lot of people on the surface, they don't see and understand. They, they, it sounds good. We don't want to discriminate. Right. That's not good. But what, that, what this really is about, it's not about uh, homosexuals wanting equal rights. They already have those. Yeah. This is about forcing business owners and others to accommodate uh, homosexuals, uh, transgenders, other deviants in their businesses. So a, a Christian daycare center, uh, if a man comes dressed as a woman and wants to apply there, by force of law, these laws would make it mandatory that they, they couldn't turn him away because he's dressed like a woman. And um, this is ultimately about crushing the rights of Christians. And and here in Mississippi and Alabama and Arkansas, that's what they're going for. They're they're ramping up their efforts because it's easy for them to succeed in California and Massachusetts. Right. But this is a whole new deal. Right. And. Uh, they, I, I'm assuming that they targeted at least Mississippi. Isn't your state the one that recently passed a religious freedom law? Yes, yes, we did. But the one that was finally passed and signed into law by Governor Bryant, it was a watered down version wow. of the original one. Yeah. But, so, so because of pressure from outside pressure from these these radical groups, they did remove language. That would that would have specified that basically protected business owners from individuals yeah. acting under the power of the state. Now it's just basically state ordinances, oh. and uh, so so while the law itself is is a is a good thing, it it was watered down before it actually went into law. And of course, the the homosexual groups are still lying about it, saying that this is going to lead to you know widespread discrimination against homosexuals. And that is just not the case. There, there is no examples of business owners refusing to do business with homosexuals just because they're homosexual. And um, these people know this because the target, the lawsuits that we're seeing against bakers, photographers, this is not about uh, a homosexual coming in and wanting to, to buy a product. They are specifically demanding that Christians and targeting them and demanding that they do something that – uh, participates in the uh, desecration of marriage. Right. Uh, it's not about people just refusing to do business in general with homosexuals, and, and they know this. Yes, they, it's it's strategic, and it is um, coercing people to violate their principles. And what they're doing is, and and you know this, you've written beautifully. You you have a wonderful way of putting these words uh, out there in in your articles. Uh, in these concepts, you know, they're they're conflating the idea of the people are born this way, so that when you turn away a same-sex marriage for uh, baking a cake uh, or doing the flowers for a same-sex marriage, you have violated who they are and the equality that they supposedly deserve. And when you when you wrap all that into one 
uh, concept, which isn't true. Nobody's born homosexual. You, um, you know, it's it that that is the I think the package they're carrying to the South. Don't you think they're trying to make an equivalency in people's minds that this is like racism, which again, you know, five and six decades ago, the the South was somewhat famous for. Right, Linda. That's that's true, and that is their one of the the primary planks of their platform is to try to equate homosexual behavior with innate characteristics like skin color. Right. And 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 they are successful at this. They are they are you know glomming on to the civil rights movement, which by the way many um, black people, pastors especially, uh, vociferously object. To, like, yeah. remember Pastor Ken Hutcherson yes. saying, don't compare your sin to my skin? Yeah. Um, but, you know, but not everyone gets it. They are, they are very successful in convincing people that this is a, a civil rights issue when it is anything but. Right. And so that's, that's the uh, uphill climb we have is, is fighting back against this because if it becomes widely understood that homosexuality is is a, a chosen behavior. You may be born with certain tendencies to certain sins, as the Bible tells us, but we are not animals, and we we choose whether or not we engage in these. You don't choose to be black, or you can't undo that. So we have a long, hard uh, road to hoe here in fighting back against this movement. Yeah, we uh, we certainly do because you know the the thing is is that. The, uh, these people are not born this way. They do have a choice. And when they say things like pe- people are fired just because of, quote, unquote, who they are, first of all, I don't see widespread evidence that that's happening. Um, and secondly, uh, if they w- were – if a man is uh, d- determined to dress like a woman, uh, that's not who he is. Uh, he has a choice. Don't dress like a woman. It's real simple. I, I know people have struggles in their minds with – some of these confusions and these delusions, and these are people that need help and counseling. And I, I don't think we miss Christian compassion when we still ho- uphold a high standard. Do you? No, ma'am. No, ma'am, not at all. And and uh, that this is another area where they have succeeded uh, in warping the truth by by Christians speaking out against this dangerous, unhealthy movement. Uh, they equate that with hatred, and they are very successful at putting this out there. And, you know, there's another thing. This whole campaign, the, the radical homosexual movement and agenda is based on lies. It's totally, and, yes, absolutely. And, and a lie that is widely repeated uh, ad nauseum is very hard to, to overcome. And that's what the hate, you hate, homophobia, yeah. the, the false construct of homophobia yeah. uh, is, is just, I mean, these people are professional propagandists. Yeah. <laughs> what what do you think about the this program is going to air on uh, the date that is the uh, Columbus, Ohio's um, Gay Pride uh, March. And what do you think about the idea, you know, every year this Gay Pride season comes around, and I'm just like, ah, I want to, something in me wants to do something about this, but I, I can't work alone, and it is such an uphill battle because they have planted this for now 30 years this idea that they ought to be able to march down the street and uh, proclaim pride in a way, and it's right from the Bible. You know, there's a passage in Isaiah about them, um, you know, marching with, uh, you know, they declare their pride like Sodom. You know, you know, this is, what do you think about gay pride? Shouldn't we in our cities be doing something to overcome this because it is such a bad representation and such a bad example to children, if nothing else? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's unspeakable what's going on, uh, and they're they're mainstreaming this. And and I, I believe fear fear of this movement is is a large part of why cities and corporations yeah. are not pushing back against it. Be, because that and and I as I have written in my columns before, the true if there is such a thing as homophobia, that's it. It's the fear of resisting this movement, and and, and that is how they have managed to get all these these gay pride parades uh, in the mainstream in the big cities. Right, and, the, uh, and, the, and they're all, uh, Democratic Party mostly, politicians are all marching down the street with these folks who are half half clothed and doing all kinds of lewd um, things that you, you can't imagine that they would, they would ordinarily march down the street with people like this, you know? No, it, but, but a lot of the Democrats agree with this movement, mm-hmm. so then you have that. 
you know, the, the fear that's out there is, is among the people who may not agree with it, but they're afraid to oppose it for fear of boycotts and targeting and lawsuits. Right. So, but yeah, this is an awful thing we're seeing with these parades. It's 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 Sodom of the West here in America today. Yeah, yeah. and I, I just uh, you know I took pictures last year. Uh, went down with some folks, and we uh, and just uh, you know just to record the corporate sponsorships. J.C. Penney uh, sponsoring the uh, teen uh, area um, and banks. Uh, we've got you know fast food like Chipotle. We've got. Uh, so many, you know, nationwide Macy's, you know, so many people, and I think it, you've you've hit it, the nail on the head, Gina, that it is fear of uh, targets and boycotts that so many of these corporations are lining up behind this um, insidious movement. We're talking with Gina Miller, who is a columnist, uh, radio personality, and uh, wonderful writer. I hope you catch her uh, work on the web, and we will be right back and continue our conversation here on Mission America right after this. Don't go away. Today's program is pre recorded. To learn more, log on to missionamerica.com. Now, here's Linda. We're talking today with somebody that may be a familiar name to some of you, Gina Miller. She's a fantastic conservative Christian columnist out there uh, talking about some of the major issues of our day um, and focuses, as I do, a lot on the homosexuality issue because if you're a person who cares about the future of our culture, you cannot avoid it unless you decide to avoid it. Um, Gina uh, has a material on barbwire.com, Renew America. Isn't that right, Gina? Renew America? Yes, I'm on renewamerica.com mm-hmm. and uh, as, w- as well as a couple of other websites, American Clarion, okay. World News Bureau. So okay. if you search Gina Miller column, uh, you'll find them. Yeah, there's a lot out there. And okay, so you know, one of the things, there's so many things I could talk with you about because you and I have have covered some of these, and you um, you've honed in on some others that I haven't. Um, but the transgender issue seems to me. I mean, I, I've been spending more time on this lately because I really believe that uh, I'm, I'm hoping. Let's just say I'm kind of hoping and praying that the homosexual movement has overplayed its hand by putting this in front of people so quickly that people are, are especially in our, our schools, uh, before with our children. You know, so many kids. Um, now being encouraged to, hey, if you have gender confusion, just go for it. You know, I think a lot of parents, if, if anybody's going to encourage people to be courageous and stand up, it might be on this issue. What do you think about that? Well, we can hope. We can certainly hope. It's just with the uh, media campaign, you've got the media, the you know Hollywood, all of the left-wing powers of the air are, are on board with this. And so people are being flooded, and there's, I think, a desensitization desensitize I can't even say it being desensitized to this issue mm-hmm. and getting used to it so now they're they're pushing the transgender issue they're 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 pushing the envelope everywhere you turn and this issue should in a, in a normal sane society uh, be uh, certainly an overplaying of the hand here but we've got transgender activists going into businesses um, it, Pushing, pushing for transgender r- rights. Not now. These employment non-discrimination laws, if they get these passed, they will include transgender people. Yes. Uh, um, you know, and and you, we don't want to go there, Linda. This is uh, talking about uh, the rights of homosexuals, the fake rights. These are bogus rights, but uh, versus the real rights of Christians and others who oppose it, they cannot coexist. They're mutually exclusive. Yes, exactly. That's the thing people don't realize. This is, and this is objective truth. This isn't somebody's opinion. This is objectively um, evil. You can just figure it out, figure out where it goes, figure out how it defies anatomy, biology, family, common sense, health, uh, and good order. And you can right away see that this is not a matter of, it's not like racism. Uh, it, it is a matter of objective truth that no society, and it doesn't even have to be a religious issue, no society should be upholding uh, this nonsense. And, and, of course, they're promoting this to our kids, that th- there was this one video out there about this little girl named Ryland. I don't know if you've seen this, the little girl that they, the parents are not allowing to transition into a boy. You know, th- this is just child abuse when parents do this. It is absolutely child abuse. It's insanity, and, and child abuse very much so. 
uh, a child is not aware of, of sexuality. This is this is the worst thing is the children. And Linda, your book is I, I, again. You, I thank you for writing that book, and, and I was glad to do a review of it. Of it, it's so important. Um, the kids, uh, they're the most important uh, people here, and they are in the crosshairs of this movement because, as you know, homosexuals cannot reproduce. So that they have to recruit. Right. And, and, and the thing that people f- keep forgetting, and I keep trying to wake people up to this because people will say, well, how does, you know, this is the other side, how does same-sex marriage affect your marriage? It affects the whole society and it affects your children and ch- grandchildren because it becomes a norm that children are taught. And when you t- teach a five-year-old that when you grow up, you might marry somebody of the opposite sex or you might marry someone of the same sex and either one is fine and you should just embrace it, you're, you're planting deeply insecure ideas in that developing child's mind, spirit, and body. And that is just, um, you're talking about raising kids that are wildly confused. And we don't need more confusion in our in our culture. No, it's evil. It's purely evil. And it's time for people to stand up and call it like it is. There's nothing good and right about this. It's immoral. It's unhealthy. It's unnatural. It always will be. And, and, and same-sex marriage does affect everybody in, in a bad way. And it's, it, it, on every level, it's wrong. Yeah. And as you said, with the kids, uh, it's just it, we're, we're looking at a dark future if we don't push back on this movement. Right, and a future in, in dark in ways we cannot predict. And that's that's the thing. It's it's a it's uh, a uh, time bomb. It really is. Um, there recently, and, and in here in our churches here, this is the thing that ju- is is just defies description. I was confirmed in the Episcopal Church, and they have gone so far uh, the other way. I left them a long time ago. Um, the The National Cathedral in Washington is going to have a the first, they say it's the first transgender priest delivering a sermon on June 22nd there. And uh, the dean of the, uh, the cathedral, who's very on the side of the homosexual movement, has said that this will be a good example for LGBT youth. He's targeting on youth when he even brings in a transgender. We have this transgender person on the cover of Time talking about the transgender tipping point. You know, I think it is a tipping point, don't you? I, I do. I do, Linda. And I further... It, it, it doesn't make sense, maybe, to some to hear this, but I believe that this is part of the Lord's judgment on our nation yeah. for turning its back on him for so many years. The the, the millions of, of babies that have been killed before being born, and, uh, you know, all of this, this moral rot coming down on us, even the Obama presidency, all of these things are judgment on our nation. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get what you deserve, and when you turn your back on the Lord... Don't be surprised at, at the dark things that happen. Yeah. You, you, we get what we choose. We, we've choos, chosen all this. We are choosing this. And by people's cowardice and not saying anything about these movements and a letting, as you said, the abortion go on. You know, here, I'm going to give you, I just was having a conversation about this with my husband. Here are three choices um, and see what you think uh, about where this is heading. Either this judgment is coming down on us because we are, um, the Jesus is about to come back, <laughs> you know, and then and everything is just racing to a, a conclusion. Or America's going down in flames. Jesus might not come back, but America could go down in flames. Or, here's the hopeful part, they're pushing this too far and too fast, and there will be a backlash, and we will somehow come around. Well, which one is yours? We don't have much time. Uh I'm I'm afraid America's falling, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but we can pray and hope for the best. Yeah, uh, that's that's what we do. Gina Miller, uh, barbwire dot com, renewamerica dot com, and many other places on the web. Find her wonderful, uh, very insightful columns. She tells it like it is, with great compassion, however, but she knows her stuff. Uh, thank you, Gina. God bless you, and may God protect you as you continue to go forward in this fight. Thanks so much, Linda. Take care. And I encourage you, friends, to look her up, and uh, you will learn a lot from reading her columns. And stay informed, because this is coming down on us very quickly. This could be judgment, but there's always chan- a chance to turn it around, because with God, all things are still possible. Have a great day.